are just boxes of produce that I just bought from a farmer's market. Now it cost me just under 50 bucks, but I have a lot of animals to feed. Turtles, tortoises, and other reptiles. You guys know that. But what I'm gonna do right now is feed our animals fruit to hydrate them. That's right, you heard that correctly. We're gonna use fruit to hydrate them because we're in an insane heat wave. Come on. Nothing says summer quite like watermelon does. And what I'm doing is using this fruit, as I said before, to hydrate these animals. But you don't go nuts with fruit. Fruit is okay in moderation because the animals can't process the sugar if it's fed too frequently. But we're dealing with a major heat wave and a major drought right now. There's been very little rain, if any, and you can only do so much with sprinklers. Now the problem with these animals is when they start hiding a lot, they don't really come out to access things like, like water bowls or other things that might contain water for them. And if you keep running your sprinklers, that's not the best thing to do either. So what you can do is in the peak of summer like this, when things are getting just a little bit too harsh, even for reptiles, you can offer them fruit to help hydrate them. And in the case of watermelon, there's a lot of water content to this and they can eat the rind too. And you can see Mickey, our Aldabra tortoise right here, is loving every single minute of this. But we do have to share with the radiated tortoises now, don't we? It's okay, we've got plenty. Wow! <laughs> she actually pulled me down on that one. So the conditions lately have been really harsh. We've been in the mid to high 90s every single day, not a speck of rain, we're losing plants. And again, reptiles, of course, we think that they're just heat dwellers and that all they need is heat when that's really not the case. Constant heat and dry heat is not good for them long term, even for desert dwelling species. So we always have to intervene and fruit on the occasion is a great way to get them feeling a little bit better and keeping that moisture in them. So on top of the conditions being like this, Blue, our rhinoceros iguana, just laid her annual clutch of eggs. So she's extremely hungry, she's extremely protective, and this dry heat on top of everything, I'm sure is making her pretty uncomfortable. So we're gonna give her one of her favorite things, organic blueberries. Hey mama, here you go. Yeah, there you go. Berries are a great fruit to use compared to some other fruits like a tomato. A tomato is way too acidic. You don't want to offer things like oranges or limes or lemons. Berries are pretty good and a lot of different species love them. So let's move on from blueberries to strawberries. Feels good to be in the shade because it is absolutely brutal out right now. And right here behind me is our Eastern box turtle pen where we have a very large group of them and they get to live naturally. So right now they're all out there in the forest and it's a good time to feed them strawberries because they can come out, help themselves to them and not be exposed to the sun because the sun has moved past their pen at this point. And believe me, they're gonna come out in droves to enjoy these strawberries. And since box turtles are opportunistic eaters, this is not far off from their natural diet. We got somebody special hanging out outside with us here today. The one and only Otis, the Eastern box turtle. And I saved some of the most choice strawberries for him, of course. Otis is an Eastern box turtle. He has the same needs as the other turtles we showed you in that big pen. But Otis, of course, doesn't get along with other turtles, so he doesn't get to live with any of them for their sake. He has his own mansion. But he's always just so much fun to interact with. And he loves his strawberries, because since he's a box turtle, he has a box turtle type appetite and a box turtle type preference for certain food items. So when Otis is not chasing me around or trying to bite my nose, he sure loves some time with a good fat strawberry. And I'm gonna let him have two of them. I'm gonna let him enjoy his day out here in the shade, of course, because it's way too hot to be in the sun. But I do have to feed some of the other uh, 
residents here at Garden State Tortoise. It's not all about you, pal, okay? So I'll see you in a minute. Chinese box turtles are box turtles, which means they are opportunistic feeders as well, and they sure do love their strawberries. These guys, of course, have access to a pond, so they can cool off in that way too, but you know, when it gets this hot, they become so inactive. And what a lot of reptiles will do, especially turtles and tortoises, is they will do something called estivation. And that's basically the summer version of hibernation where when the temperatures and conditions become that unfavorable, and in the case of a box turtle, that means it's too hot and too dry, you're gonna go underground or underwater and you're gonna stay inactive for weeks and even sometimes months. In fact, in certain parts of the world, a lot of tortoise species are not active in the summer at all and they don't really emerge and start going back to resuming normal activity patterns until the fall temperatures come and things cool off a bit and rains come back. If you're a box turtle, you love rain, so these dry, super hot conditions, not ideal. But they sure do seem to be enjoying these strawberries. Randomly throwing things throughout the enclosure helps mimic what it would be like in the wild for the turtles because nobody really hands it to them. And I know you've seen me hand the food to the turtles, but it's also good to let them forage, let them hunt, and it also allows them to stay cool in the shade while doing so. And they are, of course, omnivores eating both animal and plant matter. Redfoot tortoises here and the Galapagos tortoises are getting some papaya and mango. And these species will naturally consume some fruit anyway, so this is not really that far off for them. Of course, again, I have to keep saying this, it's given to them occasionally and in moderation. And these animals primarily eat weeds, grasses, flowers, and broad leafy greens, but they also eat invertebrates and animal matter, and that's something they also do in nature. But these animals, even though it's that hot and that dry and I'm trying to hydrate them, they do know how to use their environment, both in the wild and in a captive management situation if you give them what they need. In this enclosure, our young Galapagos tortoises and adult redfoot tortoises have several ponds to use. And when there's a drought like this, it gets very muddy. Well, look, the Galapagos tortoises know exactly how to use that. They've been wallowing in the mud, as you can see here. Jack's got a lot of this mud cake to him. And they'll even go in there and eat the aquatic vegetation, like iris, water lettuce, and even water lilies. Fruit has many benefits when you use it just like I did and you need to hydrate your animals during such severe conditions. But of course, watering them can play a major role. When it comes to the radiated tortoises, they like to stand up while it rains. So it's pretty fun to watch. Check it out. Every single animal species is different, but all of them absolutely require water. So when you use fruit in moderation, you're definitely enabling your animals to get that sufficient hydration they need during a severe drought or just overall severe, unforgiving, hot temperatures. But of course, it doesn't replace water and you always have to make sure that your animals have access to it. But hey, I am a sweaty mess. I've had it out here, so I'm heading back inside to the air conditioning and I'm gonna let these tortoises enjoy a nice soak and let them drink all they want.